In this video, we're going to be looking at the differences between the signing options available in Adobe Acrobat Professional and the online Adobe Acrobat Sign. Adobe's Document Cloud is a solution that is made up of a desktop application such as Adobe Acrobat Professional, an online solution in the form of Adobe Acrobat Sign, which is only used for signing and approving documents and creating workflows, Adobe Acrobat PDF Services, which is the online browser-based version of the desktop version of Acrobat Pro, some mobile applications in the form of Adobe Acrobat Sign and Adobe Acrobat, Adobe's I.O. is the integrations that integrate with the products like Microsoft Office, Microsoft Dynamics, SharePoint and other applications available out there. Before we dive into the various softwares to see how these signing solutions work, I would like to take you through the comparative differences between the two, but one also needs to understand the differences in the options available in Adobe Acrobat Standard versus Adobe Acrobat Professional, and of course the difference between the Adobe Sign, Business or Enterprise. Let's look at the administrative settings. In Adobe Acrobat Standard there are none and in Adobe Acrobat Professional there is limited settings that are available and these are only accessible through the browser. In Adobe Acrobat Sign there is administrative rights on both the business and the enterprise levels and this can be done on a user or on a group level. Let's have a look at the roles that the participants can have when signing documents. In Acrobat Standard, you can only be a signer. In Acrobat Professional, you have the ability to be a form filler. That means you can fill in the document before sending it for signature. Or you could be an approver. Now, the difference between an approver and a signer is a signer needs to have a signature field applied in order for them to sign a document. Whereas an approver, if there is a signature field, they could sign inside. But if there is not, then they are just monitored as an approver in the audit report. Looking at Adobe Sign now, Adobe Sign supports form filler, signer, and approver, but in the business version you also have a notary, and in the enterprise version you have three more roles that are available to you, a certified recipient, an acceptor, or a delegator. Delegators are often used when you need to have a witness on the document and you do not know who that person is at the time of sending the document. When it comes to branding, then both Adobe Acrobat Professional and Adobe Acrobat Sign allow you to brand your signing interface. Even though Adobe Acrobat Professional gives you the ability to have self-service web forms, only Adobe Acrobat Sign allows you to have multi-signer web forms. Adobe Acrobat Standard and Adobe Acrobat Sign give you the ability to send documents out to multiple people at once using their send in bulk functionality. Adobe Acrobat Professional is limited to only 50 per group, whereas Adobe Acrobat Sign is up to 300. Should you require more than this, there is an Adobe plugin called GigaSign that can facilitate more than 300 at a time. As Adobe Sign is more for business or enterprise use, the following functionality is only available in Adobe Acrobat Sign. So whether you need additional sign or authentication besides email, or whether you need pre-built workflows or integrations not just into the Microsoft SharePoint Dynamics but into other applications like Salesforce, Workday and more. Also the ability to have account delegation with the latest update to Adobe Acrobat Professional and Standard where previously you were limited to only 150 fair use transactions per user per annum, this has now changed to unlimited Adobe Acrobat Sign transactions. Also in Acrobat Professional, you're no longer using the individual version of Adobe Acrobat Sign but the SMB version giving you more functionality. Looking at the various signing options within Adobe Acrobat Professional, the first one is the request for e-signatures. This is when you are not the only signer but need to get other people within your organization or outside of your organization to sign a document. 
Adobe Fill and Sign is used where only you need to sign the document. And the third method is when you need to use a Class 3 or Class 4 digital certificate to sign your documents. Let's start by having a look at the signing solutions within Adobe Acrobat Professional. I'm going to start with the Adobe Fill and Sign. Remember, this is the option where only you need to sign a document. I'm going to select the file. And as you will notice, I can only choose a PDF document for signature. I cannot choose one of the Microsoft documents. It has to be a PDF. You are going to see that I have a couple of options here at the top. I have a couple more here than I do in the Adobe Acrobat Sign version, which I will show you later in this video. But I have the first option here where I can actually go and fill in the person's details that is signing this document. I can go and enter where it is taking place. Right. I can then come to the bottom of the document and I can then go and add some more information. If you have already used this information, you will see there is an opportunity for you to reuse that content because it can be stored within Adobe Acrobat. Um, you can also go and put in the date. These other options here are if I need to um, mark out a, a checkbox or some information that's pretty simple to use. Of course, I can reduce the size and move them around, um, no problem. I have the option here to change the color of the ink if I need to. I'm quite happy with black. And then, of course, you've got your signature that you can apply. You can see here I can only apply a signature or an initial. When I add my signature, I'm only going to have three options available. The one is to be able to sign my name using a font and be able to change the font to something that I feel is a little bit more relevant. I could either draw my signature or I could go and upload an image of my signature, which I'm going to choose to do in this instance. I do have an option to save my signature if I'm going to use it again, or if this is the device I'm going to be using always. And I can go and say, apply. It will then um, hang from my mouse and I can go and apply it. And it's going to tell you here that when you save this document, your initials or your, or your signature will no longer be available for edit. It is important for you to understand that you need to click on the next button and save a copy as a read-only file. The reason for doing this is that it will then authenticate through the Adobe Sign platform that the document has been signed. And this can be validated by this blue ribbon along the top here. And if I click on the signature panel, I can actually go and see here that changes to this document are not allowed. It is a valid certified document and that this document has not been modified since it was signed. If I do try and edit this document in any way, you will see that all the edit functionality is grayed out. Should I not choose the option to save it as a read-only copy, then all of this information will not be visible and it is not a authentic certified document. We are now going to have a look at the fill and sign option available in Adobe Acrobat Sign. So on the home screen, we're going to come in here and click on the fill and sign button. On entering the fill and sign tab, you will see it's going to ask you to add some files. Remember that these files could be in multiple formats. They don't have to be in a PDF, but they could be in a um, Excel sheet or a Word document. And when you upload these, you could upload more than one. And you'll see that both documents are attached. Then you're going to give yourself an agreement name. We're then going to click on the next button. Similar to the Acrobat Professional version, you'll see there's some tools at the top here that would allow you to either input text or add um, symbols to checkboxes and to sign your document. So I'm just going to come and click in here 
We're then going to fill in here where this document is being signed and we're then going to go to the bottom where we can go and enter our name, the date, then switch to the signature field here at the top to be able to go and add a signature, an initial or in the Adobe Sign version, a digital signature. So let's go and add an electronic signature. We can type in our name using a default font. We could draw our signature or we could go and upload an image of our particular signature. We could also use a mobile phone to enter in our cell phone number, receive an SMS and then be able to sign using the touch screen of our mobile device. I'm going to use the image and I'm then going to come and apply my signature where I need it to be placed. Once that is done, I'm going to click on done. I will then have the ability to either send a copy to somebody, download a copy, go to my manage agreements or be able to sign another document. I'm going to go to manage agreements and then in here I have the ability to either download the PDF, download the audit report, um, be able to download the form field information that was inputted but I'd be able to see here that, the per that I have signed my document. The next option we're going to have a look at is the request for e-signatures. This is going to be the option you're going to use when either you need to get more than one person to sign or if you need to get anybody besides yourself to sign. I'm going to open this up and you're going to see now it's going to prompt me for the email addresses of those people that need to be included in the signing process of this particular document. So remember, it is important that you add all the people that need to engage with this document. So we're going to go and add one. You have an option here in Acrobat to choose whether they are a signer or an approver, right? They can be somebody within your organization. For example, Daniel, remember that in Adobe Acrobat, you can only add up to 10 people to this particular list that can engage with this document. If I need more than that, I need to use the Adobe Sign option. I could add people that need to be on copy on the document. So these people do not sign or engage with the document. You can see that it automatically picks up the name of the file of the document. So you can go and change this. So we could say here, request for signatures using Adobe Acrobat. Pro. You could put any heading here. This is what's going to be the subject line of the email that they are going to be receiving. Right. Now I could go along and just add the signature fields, but by clicking on the more options. So what you'll see here is when you've clicked on the more option, I have the ability to set some reminders. These could be daily, weekly, every business day, depending on what I want. Please remember that the password over here is for when that document comes back and it has been signed to secure the document afterwards. Right, if I had this in the incorrect order, I could come in here and say, ah, oh, perhaps Daniel needs to sign first and the person at Magenta needs to sign second. Right, so we can change that the other way around again. Right, we've got different authentication methods. So either it's going to authenticate the user by their email address, or I could come in here and put in a password that that person needs to be able to enter into the document before they can uh, sign the document. Um, also, if I didn't have anybody on copy, I could do that. And this is also going to be the place where I can go and add more than one document. So perhaps I've got a group of documents that need to be signed.
I could then come in here and get an additional document signed if that is what I needed to have. And now you can see I can have various documents. So they don't have to be PDF. They can be in their native format if need be. I can then come along and say next. In this section, I now have the ability to actually go and apply the signature fields that I want. So there are two um, views that I can do this in. I am currently in the advanced view. So that means that I ha will have a couple more signature fields than I would have. So there are various um, categories. So we've got signature field. So this is where I can come towards the bottom here and actually add on a signature to the document. So what you will notice is that the fields are color coded according to the person that needs to sign in that particular area. So there are various categories that are available. So we've got a signer field. So when I drag that particular field on, you will notice that they can be resized. But each field correlates with a color of the person whose email address has been entered into that particular field. Right, you could have initial blocks if they needed to initial in a certain place. You could have a stamp if they needed to sign with a stamp. You've got independent signature field. So I need to have the signer's name that needs to go here. I need to have the date that needs to go here. And should I wish to um, have these all the same size, I then have these tools at the top here where I can go and align the fields and of course make them the same width or the same height depending on what it is I want to do. So then the last category here, we've got data fields. So these could be input fields, drop down menu boxes, check boxes that are available. And I could also have a participation stamp or a transaction number for this particular uh, document that is going out. So perhaps I'll put a transaction number over here. And of course, you can clone that to all the pages on the documents, depending on what you want. I'm just going to switch from advanced editing just to the other mode, which is simple mode. Right. So simple mode works slightly differently. What you would do is you would uh, choose the signer that you want, right? And you would come and click in the area where you want to place that particular field, right? And then you can set it as an input text box. Click in the next area, position it where you want to, still have it as an input check box, I mean text box, but you will notice there is a check box available, but I don't have those other fields like drop down menu boxes or stamp fields or anything along those lines. When I get towards the bottom of the document, you can see here, because it's got signature here, when I click, you can add this out and click on the little sign here. This will set it as a signature field. If I click below here, I can then go and set it as a name field for the signer's name, and it would give them their full name. And then, of course, I could do the date field over here and set that as a date. Right, I can then switch to the next user and apply the same information that is requested um, over here. I'll just do a signer one for now. Once I'm happy, I will then click send and that document will then go out for signature. While it's out, the people will receive an email to indicate that there is a document for them to sign. And you will see that it's warning me that no reminders have been set. And it will also say what is happening in the document. The original document has not been edited in any way. And if I come here to the home screen, 
and I click here under agreements, you will be able to see that when I on the document, now I can go and see. And if I had to click here, I can see that nobody has signed the document yet. As soon as somebody has signed the document, you will see that they will indicate to you that documents have been signed, right? You can also have a look at the activity report. And here you can go and see when the document was sent out to the person, when they viewed it, when they signed it. And of course, once the document is completed, you'd be able to have a look at the audit report. So this audit report will have a blue ribbon across the top indicating that this document has not been tampered with and I can then go and see all the information relating to that particular transaction um, when that document was sent out. Let's now look at how we're going to request signatures using Adobe Acrobat Sign. Remember, this is a separate license and not part of the Adobe Acrobat Pro um, subscriptions. And it is only the users that are requesting signatures that need to have a license of this, not people that are just signing. Right, so I could click on this request e-signature button. This is going to be the same as if I come to the send button here at the top. Once I'm in here, I have a choice. Do I want to complete in a specific order, like a hierarchy of first person A signs, once they've signed, then person B, then person C, or I could switch here to complete in any order, which means person A can sign, then person C, then person B. The same as in the Acrobat version, I can go and enter in a email address. I have the ability, depending on the version of Adobe Sign that I have, is to have more than one role than a signer or approver. I could even use delegation if I require. Let's put a different person here. Let's do Daniel again at learning curve and I could give him a different role if we need to and I've got a couple more authentication methods so remember in Adobe Acrobat I only had email and password here I could have one time pin or I can get them to log into their Adobe Sign account. I have things like a recipient group let's say for example procurement and then I could go and put in here okay so I could put two people's um, email address in this particular scenario, both people will be notified that they need to sign, but only one of the various people need to sign this particular document. Right. Um, I have still got copy like I had in the version in Acrobat. Again, I can come in here and upload the documents. What you will notice that is different here, not only can I get documents from my computer or my um template library, but I've got my cloud storage for Acrobat Document Cloud. I can do Dropbox, Google Drive, or OneDrive, depending on what I want. So I'm just going to choose one from my desktop, right? I'm going to choose the exact same document so that we can compare apples with apples. Here again, I've got a password that I could put in for password protection. This means that when the document comes back, it's password protected. But what I've got in here that I don't have in Acrobat is this option here that says a completion deadline. So I can give this document an expiry date and say if the people haven't signed it after seven days, it is actually going to expire. For those of you that deal with other countries, you can make the interface relevant for the language of the country that you need. I'm just going to add one more file just so that we have the same experience for both. And I can now preview the signature fields. First one selected, you can see as I hover over, can you see it's automatically giving me a T? This automatically has identified this as a text field and I can determine whether it's got characters or an email and I can set up here whether it is required or not. I can choose to customize this field um, should I wish to, to do that. 
let's click on the next one here I can give it a location that is also a text field when I start coming down here to the bottom when I click here so I can come and choose an e-signature field here or I can choose a block uh, that will include the email address or I could do a digital signature so I can choose the signature options that I want to choose for this particular person right again by clicking on this I could change it so if it was supposed to be for the next person I can quickly change that I can also change the field type if I needed to so if I had accidentally chosen text I can just double click and come to change the field type and then change the signature option depending on what I want right I could click in here and let's say come and make that a name field depending on what it is I want to do. Very easy, very simple to be able to use. Or I can come to the side here and drag the fields on and go and click them where I want them to be. Right, you will notice I have a couple more options that are available. So in Acrobat we had some of the, the same settings like date text we didn't have a um, participation number in the simple mode which I do have here I also have the likes of a radio button and a drop down menu button and a link which I did not have in Acrobat right let's just do one more here I'm just going to click over here and change that to a signature field just for um, ease of use once I'm finished that I can now click on the send button and the document will then go out for signature on this next screen this is something that is only in Adobe Acrobat sign and this is the ability to be able to notify yourself or to send alerts to you when somebody hasn't viewed a document in a time frame that you have allocated so the ones here at the top are default ones that you have set but you can at any time um, after a document come and change these on an ad hoc basis and indicate that you would rather like to receive an email instead of an in-application alert based on the settings that you have chosen right and then I could update my alerts the person that is going to be signing the document right their experience will be exactly the same it doesn't matter whether it is um, sent from Acrobat Professional or whether it is sent from Adobe Acrobat sign. One of the things that is different though is when you come under manage. So remember in Acrobat we went to the agreements tab under the home. Here we're going to have a lot more options that are available to you. Here I can see the document that was sent out. Of course the email address is going to indicate who is holding up the, the process because the document is stuck with them. Right, I can go and add some notes. I could go and add a reminder, and I'm just going to click in the gray area here. And I could actually come and change the expiration date if I needed to. Um, I've got a couple of other reminding options that not that are not exactly the same in Acrobat. Um, for example, I could send one right now. I can choose who it was that I wanted to remind. And of course, I've got a message that can go out um, over there. Right, so here I will have a couple of documents. I can see what is in progress, what is waiting for me. But under the completed options here, if I click on this particular document, um, I can actually come here and see the recipient and I can see the date and time um, that they signed the document. Also, what I can do is I can download the PDF and audit report. So that's the same in Acrobat. But here I can go and download the form field information that they had completed when they completed their form and this I can download as a CSV file. I can hide an agreement if I want to. I can go and um, see attachments that were included whereas in Acrobat
Acrobat, those attachments are linked to that particular file. And in Sign, I could choose to download the signed documents. Remember, I uploaded two. I had a PDF and a um, an Excel document, I can choose to download those as separate files if I need to, so they don't have to just be in one particular document. Let's switch over to the signers experience. They will receive an email from Adobe Sign indicating that there is a document that needs them to sign. It will also indicate that once they have finished signing who the next person will be that would need to sign the document and that if they are not the correct person that they can then delegate it on to somebody else to sign. So all you need to do is click on the view and sign option. Once, they, once you've clicked on that, it will launch in whatever your default browser is. So whether it's Chrome or Firefox or Edge, it doesn't matter. It will ask you to continue, which is showing your intent to sign. And then you can go ahead here and actually add the fields that you then need to be able to complete. Then you go to the next one. Can you see it's showing you where you need to go? You can then click and sign your document and you can have got various ways of signing. So sign your name by typing it up. You could draw your name. You could upload an image of your signature. You could use your mobile phone by entering in your cell phone number. You will then receive an SMS. That SMS, you will click on a hyperlink, which will take you through to the draw screen. You use your touchscreen of your mobile phone. You click apply. It then shows you on the screen. Remember, if you're signing it on your mobile device, the mobile option will not be available. Right, so we sign the document. and. You click to sign and that is your document signed. It will then go on to the next person that needs to sign it. Right, um, you as the person that sent that request out for signature, you will then get the notifications that will show up or on the little bell, it will tell you who has signed your relevant document. If we look at this option from the Adobe Sign perspective, you will see that it would be branded. Of course, you could brand it in Acrobat as well. You can see that it gives you the same information and the signing experience will be exactly the same. All right. I just have different settings in this particular doc um, setup of my sign account. But basically, you would go and put in the same information. Click to sign. You can see, and see that the document experience is exactly the same. So as you can see, although the options available in Adobe Acrobat Professional and those available in Adobe Acrobat Sign look similar, they do have their differentiating factors where Adobe Sign does give you more functionality and flexibility. In our next video, we'll be looking at the new features within Acrobat, specifically around signatures. This will be sending in bulk, creating web forms and branding as well. <music>